Astronomers have found clear evidence of what could be an Earth 2.0. This artist rendering shows the rocky planet identified as Proxima b, orbiting the Proxima Centauri star. Proxima Centauri is the closest star to our planet apart from the sun, and it is about 4.25 light years away. Here to discuss it with us is CBS News contributor and theoretical physicist Michio Kaku. Dr. Kaku, I am very excited to talk about this. Uh, the discovery of an Earth-like planet a mere 4.2 million light years away. Uh, how big of a deal is this? This is a game changer, because astronomers have hit the jackpot. This is their dream come true. A new chapter in astronomy has opened up. Now, the holy grail of astronomy is to find the closest Earth-like twin, a doppelganger in outer space. And now we've nailed it. After looking at 4,000 extrasolar planets, we finally found the closest one that looks very similar to the planet Earth, we think. Think about that. How did we not know this existed before? Well, these planets are very tiny and very difficult to find. Now, if you look at the night sky at night, uh, the stars you see at night are several hundred to a few thousand light years distant. This planet is 4.25 light years. That's a hop, skip, and a jump. Right. And Stephen Hawking, my colleague, has already stated that in 20 years, 20 years' time, we'll send the first probes to the nearby stars. Mm -hmm. A new chapter in astronomy. Instead of trying to explore the solar system, now we're actually thinking about going to the next solar system in outer space. Now, when, we, when we say this could be an Earth 2.0, it makes me think of the people here on Earth 1.0 who think we may be ruining the place and need to go somewhere. Is this the kind of place we could go and just set up life as we know it? Not in our lifetime. First of all, we can't even go to Mars yet with a colony. Uh, NASA has already stated that sometime in the 2030s, the first humans will go to the red planet. So probably by the end of this century, we'll have actually a functioning colony on Mars. But to actually send people to Earth 2.0, that would require new technologies into the next century. That's why Stephen Hawking wants to send chips, posted stamp size chips by the thousands, shot by laser beams to the nearby stars, traveling at 20% the speed of light. And researchers have determined that the planet's temperature is actually sustainable for liquid water? What does that mean? That's right. If you're too close to the mother star, then the oceans will boil. If you're too far from the mother star, the oceans will freeze. You want to be in the Goldilocks zone, where water is just right to be liquid. And why liquid water? Because liquid water is a universal solvent. It's the amniotic fluid that gave birth to DNA and RNA here on the planet Earth. And we think that this planet is right in the habitable zone. Bingo. Right where it has to be. So, Dr. Kaku, I, I can't let you go without asking you this question. We know the temperature. We have some idea of what it looks like. We think it's a lot like Earth. Do we know whether or not there is anyone living there? No. And I'm sure if there are people living there, they would ask the question, is there intelligent life on the Earth? This interview is happening on that planet right now in a bizarre parallel universe. Uh, yeah. And, of course, we all know the answer. There is no intelligent life on the Earth. Just watch the presidential debates. <laughs> <laughs> no intelligent life on the Earth. <laughs> Dr. Michio Kaku, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. My pleasure.